Hello all, welcome back for another video. Today's video is going to be my reaction to Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. But before I get to that, if you'll indulge me, I just want to send out a belated Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you spent it with your friends and family. Hope you all got everything you wanted. And also, I hope nothing but the best for everyone in the new year. Now, with that out of the way, also, I, I should uh, should send a very belated birthday to Pray 5 uh, I hope your day was special. I hope you had a great time. And I apologize for it being so late in saying so, but I hope you had a great birthday, and here's to many more to come. Okay, now, with all that out of the way, let's get on to Rise of Skywalker. I won't be going scene by scene, because obviously you kind of can't, because it's not on video yet. You have to go to the theater to see it. So my son and I uh, went to see it. This was the second time he had seen it. I kind of sent him first uh, <laughs> to come back and give me the report of, Dad, you're going to hate this wait for it to come out on video, or Dad, I think your blood pressure will handle watching it in the theater. So he came back and gave his report of, Dad, you can handle this in the theater. So we went, and we saw the movie. Now, right out of the gate, I will say that this movie, by and far, is way better than The Last Jedi. I was not as angry uh, with this movie as I was with The Last Jedi. So, there's that. Um, the movie overall was okay. It wasn't f great. It wasn't, you know, fabulous. But it was okay. It was decent. Um, there are parts in the movie, which I will get into momentarily, that kind of irked me. And there were some parts I really liked. Um, <clears throat> at the beginning... Um, my thoughts on the first meeting between uh, Kylo Ren and the Emperor was I liked it that Kylo didn't exactly bow down right away. He finally showed some, uh, for lack of a better term, balls, standing in front of the Emperor. Um, I liked that. I've been kind of wanting that since The Force Awakens. Um, however, I wish in a way they had taken a breath at this moment in the movie to really give the Emperor time for a villain's manifesto and really get into how he survived the Death Star, how he's been doing things behind the scenes and not just kind of gloss over it and just kind of, yeah, it's all been me, dude. Um, <laughs> kind of wish they had taken a breath there, but okay. Uh, it was done all right, I guess, with the time allotted with everything else they had in this movie. I guess they did the best they could with the time allotted. Um, now, I did like the fact that Leia... Uh, was shown to be training Ray, which was great. Her actually get some training in 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 a movie was great. Um, also, I kind of liked that they also before anybody had a chance to go. Well, how did Leia know anything about the Force? Go back and show that when Luke had the, his temple, he had trained Leia. So. I like that. I, I like that they tied that up uh, rather nicely. Um, I've heard people comment about Luke's uh, X-Wing. Uh, I too, when I saw that she was on the planet, went, oh no, she's leaving in the X-Wing. However, what made this series of events okay for me was Luke was the one that pulled it out of the water and Luke was the one that gave it to her. If she had been the one to pull it out of the water and just jump into it, jump it into the, the X-Wing and take off, that would have made me angry. 
because it would have been something that she didn't earn. However, with Luke being the one to have pulled it out and Luke the one to give it to her, I can live with it. Uh, another part of the movie uh, that kind of irked me was the whole introduction of the holocron. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, yes, excellent. How are they going to use this? And I was let down because they turned it into a GPS unit. Um, now, I get it. Uh, this is the first time we've seen really seen a holocron in the canon since the EU was kind of a forgotten about uh, with Disney. Uh, but... <sighs> To me, it's one of those moments, if you're going to do it, do it right. And if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. Um, because a holocron, yes, in canon, there isn't any rules for a holocron. However, for those of us who are going to be able to see it right away and go, holocron, we're going to know that a Sith holocron can only be accessed by a Sith. A Jedi holocron can only be accessed by a Jedi. not a robot not a computer there were very strict rules about how the information in a holocron could be accessed so to me that didn't sit well um, but again um, I guess it's better than nothing but eh, I would like to kind of see them either do it right or don't do it at all um, but, uh, now as the movie progresses, um, I'm okay with, uh, Kylo Ren's redemption at the end. Um, I'm not so happy about the force heal. Force heal does kind of open things up for questions that really don't need to be answered uh, like why didn't Obi-Wan just heal Qui-Gon um, or Luke why didn't he just heal Darth Vader uh, so for me it was like oh really shouldn't have gone there gotta should have done that another way because the whole force heal thing just opens up a Pandora's box that really should have been closed and stayed closed and left alone. Um, so on that aspect, I didn't like it. Um, but, I mean, for the story, it, it was necessary. Uh, but still, I just kind of wish they hadn't gone there. Uh, the Force Teleport is another one that just kind of, heh? But... I suppose um, it kind of was a little bit more uh, magic-y than I would have liked. Um, but again, uh, for the right action sequence they need, were going for, they needed it to happen that way. So yay, Force Transport exists. Um, although I think for me, it wouldn't have been so bad if they had done it just the once and not during the sec during what a lot of people after the last Jedi called the Skype call, uh, being able to Kylo Ren, being able to grab the necklace off her neck when they were talking through the force. I think that was an overstretch. Um, just a bit. Uh, the passing of the lightsaber was okay, but I think it would have been less of a irk to me if they hadn't already have done the grab the necklace during the Skype call. Um, but overall, I thought the movie was good. I liked the fact that they did a lot of uh, corrections like uh, my son and I both laughed at the line uh, a Jedi's weapon deserves to be treated with more respect I, I liked that very much I liked the fact that they they tried to redeem 
Luke a little bit in this movie. Um, I think the 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 older characters were treated with a little bit more respect in this movie than they were with at the, in the Last Jedi. So overall, I can I can accept that. And overall, I give the movie a six out of ten. The other major thing I didn't like, um, and before I go rambling too much, I, I'll say this. It's not that I don't like it for the reasons I've heard. I don't like it for a different reason. At the very end, when she's on Tatooine, and after the lightsabers go down, and she sees Luke and Leia, and she's asked who she is, she says, I am Rey Skywalker. And my immediate reaction was, no, 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 no. And it's not because her saying that uh, degrades or insults the Skywalker name in, in, in any way in my view. What annoys me about that is throughout the trilogy, as my son and I discussed, one of the themes has been, Ray, be comfortable with who you are. Be at peace with who you are. Don't be afraid of who you are. And here at the end, in my view, she's given that moment. She's given that moment to be at peace with who she is who she truly is. She's been given that moment. She's been given that spotlight to be proud of who she is, to be comfortable with who she is. And instead of saying, I am Ray Palpatine and being at peace with that, she cowers. And says, I am Luke, I am Ray Skywalker. Which means she still isn't proud of who she is. She's not at peace with who she is. And to me, that takes a little bit of it away. But I might be just over nitpicking. But to me, she should have said, Ray Palpatine. not Ray Skywalker because if she had said Ray Palpatine then it shows that she's finally accepted who she is she's at peace with it by saying I'm Ray Skywalker it doesn't give that same message I get it that it's supposed to be an homage to Skywalker to Luke and to Ben and to Leia but to me it just feels like somebody should have been off set going you missed the boat Ray because to me that was part of her story was her coming to terms with who she is who she was and who she is now and by her ducking it and saying, I am Skywalker and not a Palpatine, to me, it's like, oh, she hasn't learned yet. And she's still not at peace, which kind of leaves you going, huh. But overall, as I said, I will give the movie a 6 out of 10. And I mean, it almost got up to a seven, but now that I've had time to reflect and think, uh, I'll give it a solid six. And yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I know that a couple of my friends are going to enjoy it. Um, I would have liked to see more at certain parts. Uh, as I said, I would like to see take. I would have liked them to have taken a breath at the beginning and allowed the Emperor to have a full manifesto but with everything in the movie they kind of needed the time without making it a three hour three and a half hour Lord of the Rings movie so 
with that, I will say thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you disagree with me, which I know many of you will. Um, and have a great day. Until next time, take care easy, folks. Thank you.